starting bang on time at 6.30 because we have the live stream running. So welcome to all those who are just tuning in to the live stream. Um, a little bit of housekeeping to start with. First of all, my name is Paul Brown. I am one of the pastors here at City Hope Church, where Ola is a member. Um, it's a privilege to serve you in this way. Um, but I do, at the very beginning, seek your forgiveness. Um, even though my youngest son is married to a West African girl, I have visited Nigeria on a number of occasions. My pronunciation of names is rubbish. So if I get your name wrong, I'm asking you to forgive me now, if that's okay. Um, very practically, um, it's very, if, you, if you need any of the facilities, it's very obviously signposted. The toilet's through these double doors and just across the small lounge behind. It's very obvious. Um, obviously, these are strange times because of the COVID-19 crisis. Thank you all for wearing masks. I have the privilege of not having to wear one because I'm officiating. Um, and also, as we finish today, uh, could I encourage you just to, to leave as promptly as you can? I'm not telling you to run to the door, but... Um, we, we'd, we'd appreciate that. Um, also, just to say, you've been given a bag as you come in. In that bag, you, if you haven't looked already, I will, I will tell you, you've got, you've got some food to take away with. In, in normal circumstances, we'll be sharing food together, but we sadly can't do that. But you've got some food to take away with. There's also a drink in there for you, which you can access any time you want. Um, and you can take your mask off if you're drinking, because otherwise it makes a mess. Right. Um, you've also got some hand sanitizer. You've got a face mask in there and some tissues as well. Um, we are live streaming, like I said. Can I encourage you to put your phones to silent? That's just helpful so we don't interrupt the proceedings. Other than that, I think we can get started. Um, and I'll start by saying once again, good evening and thank you for coming uh, at what is always such a difficult time. Let's pray together, shall we? Lord, as family and friends mourn the loss of a loved one, we ask you to cover us with the wings of your protection and your love. And I pray for everyone here present that you would give them courage so they can stand before us and share their fond memories that they have of their beloved. Father, it's been such a big blow to them as a family, but I pray you will be their strength and you will be a strong tower for them. We know that you love them so much and that you will take care of their needs. And Lord, fill the gap that has been left in their hearts. Give them the courage to face each day without him. And I pray that all, I pray that all can find hope and be lifted above the darkness and the distress into the light and peace of your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Right now, we're going to listen to AO, who's going to play 10,000 Reasons for us. Again, because of these COVID rules, we ask you not to sing. You can hum along in tune, I'm sure.
thank you so much. Fantastic. We're just going to spend a few moments now looking at some words of Jesus. It's always good at times like this to remind ourselves of his words. In Matthew's Gospel, Jesus said these words, Come to me. He said, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Truly comfort in words at a time like this. All of us, at some time or other, get weary. Come to me, all you who are weary. And I don't mean tired, you know, when you just need to go to bed a bit earlier. I mean weary, weary of the things of life. Could be any number of things. Maybe, maybe relationship problems or money trouble. That maybe the kids are, are playing up and they're not, they haven't turned out as you expected and you're weary of it. Maybe it's the in-laws or the lies people tell you or illness that you have or a loved one has. Maybe it is grief. That is wearying you. Sometimes what wearies us is the mistakes we make. The things we did and we shouldn't have done. The things we should have done but didn't. Are you weary of life? Jesus says to you, come to me. Are you weary in grief? Jesus says, come to me. In life, we can also be burdened, weighed down. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. And we can be weighed down by many things again. By the things we've done wrong, that can be a burden on us. By the things we've said wrong. You know, as soon as you say it, you think, I wish I hadn't said that, and you want to stuff the words back in your mouth, but you can't, it's too late. And that can become a burden. Even sometimes the things we think. Why is that thought in my head? Wrong thoughts, confusion, anguish, grief again. They can crush us. They can weigh us down. And where do you turn when your knees begin to buckle under that burden? Who do you talk to? The doctor? The barmaid, Jesus says it loud and clear, come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest, rest for your soul. I've seen people in tears of guilt and anguish and pain. And I've seen them turn to Christ and find total rest. It's miraculous, but it's real. People who have heard him say, come to me, and have responded to him. And I could introduce you to hundreds that I personally know who have experienced that rest for their soul. Jesus wants to make things right for you. He sees you. He knows you. He knows your thoughts and your fears and your joys and your pain. I'll give you rest, he says. I'll give you rest for your soul. What is that rest? Well, it's not a Sunday afternoon snooze on the sofa. It's much, much, much more than that. It's, this rest is freedom. It's freedom from fear. It's freedom from anxiety and despair. It's peace of mind and heart. This rest starts with forgiveness. Forgiveness of our own wrongdoing. You won't find true freedom. You won't find true forgiveness anywhere else than 
Jesus Christ. But let me say this. There is hope. There is always hope. Come to me, Jesus says. Even as you mourn, turn to him and learn from him. Amen. Amen. Bless you. I'm going to hand over now to Victor. Victor, where are you, mate? Oh, bless you. Victor is going to be bringing his... Please join me up here. Victor is going to be bringing his tribute, the words of which are on page five of this very cleverly put together programme because there are two sides to this. And if you look at the page... Victor, excuse me while I just point people to the right place because I turned to the wrong place myself. Okay. <coughs> the biography. Yeah. It's in there somewhere. It's page, on this side. It's on this side, yeah. and it's on page... Well, I've numbered them, page five, but you can flick through to find the biography. I'm sure that's the right page. It is. It is, sir. Okay. Thank you. Biography of Adebayo Olukaide Ishala Shifua. Born September 10, 1961, to the family of late primate Joachim Adebamuro Shifua and late Reverend Mother Josephine Adenike Shifua, founders of the Light of the Beginning Prayer Church, Ijo Imole Uro. Bio, who was the second child of four and first son of his parents, attended St. James's Anglican Primary School, Atikori Jebubu, Ogun State, where he completed his primary education in 1973. Bio then proceeded to Malusi College. Oke Shokmi Ijebubu State, from where he took and passed with flying colours the West African School Certificate in 1979. Whilst in Malusi, Bayou, as he was affectionately known, as a talented footballer, became a member of the school football team. Aside from football, Bayou had a love of reading, which led to him taking part in school quizzes and inter school debating competitions. Outside of school, Bayou showed a talent for drumming and used this to great effect in the church, where he also composed songs and served in the counselling team. On leaving Molisi College, Bayou moved to Belkta, where his older sister, Auntie Fumilayo, was a student at Sacred Heart Hospital School of Nursing. Bayou, like me, benefited gratefully, gratefully, greatly from being in a Belkta. As we, we were nurtured by his sister, and his, it was there that many of his traits we have all grown to love. Many of the traits we all grown to love in him came, to, came out. But you took up a job with the Organ State Sports Council, Abelta, for what would nowadays be known as a gap year. Whilst working with the Sports Council, Bayou, because of his intelligence, enthusiasm, and hard work ethic, became a favourite of the executive directors with the managing director whom he and I excuse me whom he and I referred to as Mama taking us under her wing and pushing us to be the best we could be in 1980 after his gap year Bayou enrolled with Ogden State Polytechnic to study town planning Bayou's open nature kind heartedness and joie de vivre <clears throat> drew people to him. And in part, and apart from Melissa College, it was at Ogun Poly that he met many of the people who have become lifelong friends. <clears throat> but he was a frequent visitor to Lagos, where he had family and friends. One such friend lived in a family house in Ketu. It was on one such visit that, to that Ketu resident that Bayou spotted a young lady his friend's niece. On his return to Abelta, <coughs> Bayou came to me. Telling me that he had, and I had to go to Lagos the following week. 
as he had something to show me. We arranged to go to Lagos a couple of weeks later, and at this point he told me that he had found the one. I didn't meet Bolanle during that visit as she was away attending a family function, but I get, did get to meet her later and immediately agree with Bayou that she was the one for him. Bayou and Bolanle became an item. They remained together and continued to love one another for the near 40 years they have been together. This cl clearly shows that even at that young age, Bayou knew his own mind and was right about Bolanle being the one. Finishing from Ogun Poli in 1985, Bayou proceeded to Benin for his NYSC. And on his return from Benin, took a job with Lagos State Development and Property Corporation, LSDPC. In July 1980, Bayou and Bonale married and left Nigeria for the UK. Bayou worked as a housing manager with Newham Council for several years. And after gaining an MA in housing, set up as an estate agent, where he provided a range of services to many clients. Bayou had a huge thirst and appetite for knowledge. He read widely and extensively, and it was this thirst for knowledge and learning that led to him obtaining LLB and LNM law degrees. He enjoyed and reveled in social discourse, particularly theological, political, and music debates, to such effect that many an hour was spent with friends in discussion on diverse matters and issues. His knowledge and understanding of Christian scripture is such that pastors, when talking with Bayou, mistook him for one of them. Likewise, his knowledge of the Yoruba language, traditions and music had many people asking if Bayou had studied the Yoruba language in school. Bayou's love of his wife and children was immense and he was always at his happiest, surrounded by family and friends. Bayou survived by his wife, Mrs. Bolanle Oshifwa, sons Olamide, Adetaya, and Tualade, his older sister, Chief Mrs. Funlaya Oyebamiji, younger brother, Mr. Deji Oshifwa, and younger sister, Mrs. Adeola Balogun, uncles, cousins, nephews, nieces, brothers, and sisters in law. Adieu, Bayou Gaga. Thank you. Ayo is now going to play us another hymn, Blessed Assurance.
thank you. Our first reading this evening is from the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, Holomedi. Holomedi? Alamedi. Sorry, man, I told you about my accent, didn't I? <laughs> Um, I'll be proceeding with um, Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 5 everything has its time to everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sharon Johnson is who's a member of the church here at City Hope is now going to come and sing that great old hymn How Great Thou Art, Sharon. Then sings my soul, my 
thank you, Sharon. We're now going to hear some live tributes from siblings and family members, um, most read by others. The first one is going to be read by Mrs. Titi, um, and that's from Chief Agnes. So, is Mrs. Titi? Yes, thank you. Bless you. Good evening. Um, my name is Titi Shadare. I'm reading this tribute on behalf of Mrs. of um, Auntie Fumilayo, um, Chief Mrs. Agnes Olufumilayo Oyebamiji, um, is the late Brother Bayo's um, older sister. A tribute to my diamond. Olukayode, the news of your departure came as a rude shock but I took solace in the fact that you have gone to meet your creator. Hmm. This life is unexplainable. You were such a wonderful, strong, hardworking, ever cheerful, wise, kind, supportive, tireless brother. I thank God that I was privileged to have spent my early years in life with you as the first child the very beginning of our love, oneness, uniqueness, and strength. You stood by me through all my quiet and challenging times. You were very stable and reliable. Even seeing you as my lookalike always gives me joy. But why have you left me naked, hopeless, and lonely? Kayode, why? Your sudden departure has formed a great pain in my heart. Why did you leave me with the memory of your death on the very day of my birth anniversary? Only God knows and sees everything. Who am I to question him? Who giveth and taketh? You served and loved your family till you served and loved your family till the very end. I have started missing the sound of your solemn but loving voice, the wisdom in your advice, the stories of our life and living together as siblings, our growth and suffering while working as little children. So now that has snatched my love, brother, confident, just partner, advisor, counselor, companion, friend, and everything to me. You have gone to see the king where there is no more dying, weeping, struggling, and pain. All we had shared and all the good memories will forever remain with me. Everyone will miss your generosity and your act of kindness. I promise to continually be a channel of blessing to all our family members especially your loved ones. You came, saw, fought, struggled, and you conquered. Sleep tight. Ade bayo, olukayode, omo ijebu odoro, omo okinkon, dani kasi, kini baba enikon yoshe, omo olowo ni shafe, ayamasan atamata win. Atamata. I am I'm sorry, I know Brother Bayo will be laughing now. <laughs> Ofori Onigbe se she yi kiti kiti. Omo aji for jok bo bo da rabi egbe. Adio, 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 de adebayo ishola till we are united on this resurrection morning. This is by Chief Mrs. Agnes Olufumilayo Oye Bamiji, Brother Bayo's older sister in Nigeria. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, it was a good job you didn't get me to read that, weren't it? <laughs> um, our second tribute is from the Honourable Pastor Ayodeji. 
to be read by, who's going to be read this? Abayomi, Abayomi, where are you? I've already been told off for butchering your pronunciation and language, please forgive me. Good evening. My name is Abayomi Onodeko. I'm reading this tribute on behalf of DG, Honorable Pastor Ayodeji Olasukomi Oshifua, his late Adebayo's younger brother. How do I begin? Agbeti re lu ala idaro, aluko ti re lu ikoso, leke leke ti re lu ikefon, irin ti go ke alo, irin ti ka, ili e ni ti wo. Bodami, be you gaga, uluka yode, why, shuti yani eni. I was preparing to meet you soon, but it all ended totally. The last time I called you on phone, you told me I'm a real alike way. When would that be now? Resurrection. Hmm. But that mean, you taught me how to live and save, how to be content with what I have. You never endorse laziness or lies. You are the greatest caring hard-working and loving brother I haven't known. Indeed, the mighty Iroko has fallen. The ground will surely fill the heart. My compassionate brother has left me. The love and care you showered on me as your twin brother has vanished. And now I'm left alone to protect, defend, defend and prosper our family legacy and good name in our peaceful community. Sincerely, I'm naked and lonely. Now, who will cover me up in all spheres of, of life? Your memories will forever linger in my heart. Sunryu Bodami, Omo Ayamasa, Ata Matawi, Honorable Pastor. Ayodiji Olasukomi Oshifuya, Bayo's younger brother. Thank you. Our third tribute from siblings and family members is uh, going to be read by Doyen, and it's from Deaconess Adiola. Good evening all. I'm reading this tribute on behalf of Dickness Adiola Balogun, the younger sister to our late uh, brother, Mr. Osifua. Great souls never die. My big brother, Adebayo Olukayode Osifua, your kindness and generosity will always be remembered by all those who have the pleasure of knowing you. I remembered years back when I was on sick bed and you assured me that I will be free from pains and sickness. You told me that without life challenges, I cannot grow strong. I know it's a way of reminding me to appreciate the simple things of life. I was so shocked, saddened, and depressed when I heard that the part had ended so soon. Hmm, it is not long enough to laugh with you again. As I look back wondering, did I even remember to thank you enough for all that you have done? It is a pity that death has robbed me of a chance to thank you and express my gratitude for all you have done as a caring brother. I will always remember you, big brother, because there will never be another one to take your place in my heart. Sunreo, Egbomi Atata, Omo Oluwoni Shoju Afe Ijebu, Omo Ayamaso, Omo Ata Matawi. 
rest on till we meet to part no more. From on behalf of um, your sister, Dickness Adiola Balogun. Next, we have uh, Eniola, who's coming to read, I believe, for Olafunke. Or is it the other way around? Have I got that wrong? A tribute, a tribute to my Uncle Bile, a rare gemstone. Uncle Bile, I still can't believe I am writing a tribute because of your sudden demise. Some truths in life are hard to accept. Your death on your sis senior sister's birthday, which is my mum, was a shock and a tragedy. Words cannot describe this difficult moment. You were one of my favourite uncles in a million. You had big dreams and plans for me. You were a giver. Humble, caring, loving, kind at heart and soul. You were a gloomy personality. Your smile is your signature, which melts my heart always. You don't get annoyed easily. You were so calm and collected, an easygoing person. All these memories can't be forgotten till eternity. Having you as my amiable uncle is one of the best in my past and at present, but death wouldn't allow me to enjoy my future. You were suddenly blown away just like that. But who are we to question God? I consider myself blessed to have been your niece. For this, I'll forever be grateful to God. You've left an indelible mark in my heart. If I could cry and wake you up, I'm sure you would have woken by now. It's really hard for someone to understand how painful our separation is. The thoughts of you as my amiable uncle dwells in my heart forever. But we take solace in God. I will surely miss my truthful, lovable and kind person that you are. Wishing you a heavenly rest in eternity. Good night, Uncle Bayo. By Ola Funke Sanini Oyi Bamiji, Bayo's niece. And we have one more tribute in this section that's from Madupe. Madupe, where are you? Is Mudupe here? Yes. yes, you are. Sorry. I try and be a gentleman sometimes. Okay. Gone too soon. We find it hard to behold your early transition to glory, to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. But our solace remains that one day we shall meet to part no more. The memories of the early days we spent together with other, family, with other members of the family keeps flashing through my mind. I can hear your voice, your laughs and jokes in the family gathering still going through my head. Today, we honor you and cherish the great memories we shared. You are unique, a friend to lots of people. You will forever remain in our hearts. We would like everyone reading this tribute to reflect on this quote. Every man's life ends the same way. It is only the details of how he lived and how he died that distinguish one man from another. Ernest Hemingway. Good night, dearest brother Bayo. Rest in peace. Bayo is now going to play another hymn for us. Oh God, our help in ages past. Ayo.
you once again. Um, our second Bible reading is from John chapter 14, and that is Oladipo. Oladipo, where are you? There we go. My name is Oladipo Sholo. The Bible reading is from John 14, verse 2 to 6. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. That where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, do not know where you are going, and how, and how uh, can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Thank you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except through him. We now have some live tributes from some friends. First up is Mr. Paul Odiabu. You know what I'm saying about pronouncing names. Paul. It's a good name, Paul. Bless you. I see you again. I don't even have words to express my deep sadness. Yes, my soulmate of many years left me, but it's mostly the loss of a friend. Be user, the sky is waiting for you with a big party, like the ones you loved so much. Bayo has a high spirit of duty and sincerity. We share almost the same sense of fairness, including the sense of right and wrong. I write this with great sadness over the unimaginable loss of a very close friend due to cancer. He was 59. He fought a brave and strong battle for two years but the cancer would not allow him to get better. <clears throat> he took each day in his stride, never really complaining, but hoping that the treatments would finally end so he could get on with his life. This was also my hope. The good man inside and out was a wonderful friend to me. We were supporting each other for over three decades with his gentle and caring nature. One of his beliefs in life was the importance of being authentic. With people saying what needs to be said because it's good for the soul. Unfinished business causes pain and having peace is essential for a healthy and joyful life. I always admired how he never judged or forced his opinions on anyone, but offered valuable and truthful advice, which I will always miss. <laughs> the you always kept his sense of humor the user was loving and real. He was a wonderful husband to Bola and a loving father to his three boys who are now strong men. Thank God he had laid strong foundation for them. The many people who loves his children will watch over them as he and Bola ever have and will always make sure they have 
a great life full of his values and wishes. The user's beautiful spirit will live through his children and they will always know how much he loved them. He tried with all his heart to stay alive for them. But God called him and he had to go. My hope is that he rests in peace knowing he did all that he could and that Bola and his children will be fine. When we love people, it's so comforting to know that they will always be with us in our hearts. I will see you again, my friend. Good night and so long. Sunreo ulubeyo babbeyo. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Um, Kola is now going to come. Uh, good evening, all. The Trojan is gone with his chariot, Captain Adebayo. It was not seen or expected. It came suddenly and as a shock. I know you are not dead, but sleeping at the bosom of the Lord God. A soldier you are, and you fought the battle to the end, never giving up or giving an indication of surrender. Adebayo, you were a brother, a friend, encourager, colleague, and a whole lot more than words can describe to me. Your departure was a shock. I am still in despair that you had left suddenly to return to glory. The journeys we took together the last few months are still fresh and vivid in my memory and you will be remembered forever. I thank God for all that we shared in all circumstances, genuine discussions with lessons about life, business, politics, economy, family, and events all around the world. You are a principled, brave, astute, consistent, optimistic, courageous, private, and human indeed. That's who you are, Adibayo. You gave me, and fondly called me, Bros Collie. You will be missed, sleep well in the bosom of your maker, our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that our Lord Jesus Christ will comfort and wipe away the tears of your family and loved ones. The vacuum left by your departure will be filled by our Lord God Almighty. I pray that the Almighty God will protect, preserve, and prosper your family that you have left behind. Your wife, Bola, your children, Lamede, Tayo, and Tiwa, all and all your loved ones in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Adebayo Oshifua, rest in peace. My name is Kola Alan Waju. Next, his daughter's going to read for his dad, for for her dad. So who's going to read this? Ayomidi, come on, darling. Good evening. My name is Ayomide Ayofe, and I'm reading this tribute on behalf of my dad, Mr. Adeyemi Ayofe who is Uncle Bio's friend and brother-in-law. Sleep tight, Bio. 
We will have to learn to live each day without you. We will, you will never be forgotten. You were a good friend and brother. We will hold on to fond memories of the times and moments we shared together. Your sudden death has shown us again that life can be taken at any time. We pray that God will use your passing on to make us better people, so your passing on will not be in vain. We will forever miss you until we meet again. Sleep tight, bro. Your friend and brother, Yemi Ayofe. Thank you so much. Korede, are you here? Thank you, sir. Come join me. Good evening, everybody. My name is Korede Botai. This, this seems like uh, like a dream, unbelievable. But God knows best. A good soul has ascended to heaven, left just too soon by all. Knowing him as a pleasant person was a memory never to be forgotten in a very long time to come. Loved his family, his smiles and laughter would light up the atmosphere anyway. Always full of ideas and amazingly business minded. I've never had a dull moment with Bayo. No one would. He loved life and did enjoy life before the rude shock of his death occurred. O oh Lord, grant Bayo Shifua eternal rest through your infinite mercy and grant his entire family the fortitude to bear the loss. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We're now going to hear Sharon sing another hymn to us. Sharon's going to come and sing In Christ Alone. Ground. His body lay, light of 
Dupe is going to now come and do our third reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Madupe. I'll be taking the third Bible reading from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 to 18. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 to 18, and not 3 to 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you, by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Thank you. Thank you, you Madhu Payne. We're now going to see some recorded tributes up on the screens behind me. Mr. Adebayo of Oshifua, um, though I met him virtually through my uncle um, Paul Odobayo, Polo. Adebayo was a kind of a down-to-earth person. During my dealings with him concerning projects in Marathon, Equatorial Guinea, He will walk around the clock to be time of the project um, and will advise me how to approach different type of um, project investments which um, as, um, as an uncle 
um, he will always make negotiation with the fellow associates um, much more easier and um, never a time he will leave an issue pending without getting the appropriate results. It's a pity um, we lost him at a very prime age and in a cycle of business. And um, actually, um, we did not conclude the the business just to the core, the coronavirus um, issue, but then we we'll miss him. And I pray God gives the family the strength to bear the loss. I do. We love you, but God love you most. Rest in peace. Bros be you. As you are fondly called by me and some of my friends. It was sad to hear the news of your demise. And my brother Abela, who was your friend, was shocked when I broke the news to him. May God Almighty give strength to those you left behind and give them the fortitude to bear your loss. Rest in peace, Abi. My name is Frank Egbo. I'm here with my wife, Fola. Uh, it's indeed uh, shocking, sad news to hear of the passing on of my very good friend, Bayo Mashifua. Uh, is going to be deeply missed. I was actually looking forward to seeing him at my sister's birthday to celebrate together because uh, his birthday is very close to mine. It's on the 10th of September, um, 16th of um, September. Uh, it's a shame. Um, it's a big loss. Um, I've always known by your to be very cheerful, very friendly. I've never seen him get angry. He's surely going to be missed. I pray that our good Lord God will grant his gentle soul a perfect rest in peace. Adieu, my good friend. Maya was a very respectable, bubbly person. He was a friend to my, one of my, my husband's very good friends. And we are really going to miss him. We were shocked of his demise. And we pray that our good Lord will grant Bola and the children the strength and fortitude to bear the loss at this present time. Rest on bio. Rest in peace, bio. My name is Babatunde Ariyo Tona, a very dear friend of Bayo Hoshifuwa. We met first in 1979, and then our friendship blossomed when we met again at the Ogun State Polytechnic in 1980. That friendship continued when we met again in London in 1990-91. Since that first meeting in 1979, Bayo has been a dear friend, a confidant, and a brother, a compassionate human being, a gentleman, always smiling. Rest on, look at it, until we meet to part no more. Such a shame that death has snatched you away. But your memory link is on. Keep smiling, brother.
your next of kin. Babahari Otona. My name is Shegun Doherty, cousin to Bayo Shifua, who has just gone to be with the Lord. Uh, I'd like to give this tribute. Uh, Bayo, in his lifetime, was a gentleman to the core, loving, trustworthy. As a matter of fact, the last time we spoke, he promised to visit me here in Luton, not knowing that that would be the last time we will ever meet. And um, to this day, I feel the loss because um, through my late uncle chief, I did the Jodesha here, we became close and we met here in UK. It's a big surprise that um, he has left us and I pray that the Lord who uphold the family. May his soul rest in perfect peace. Oma Tamata, Oma Ramasa, Ophelia Nibese Yemo, Oma Nik Okini Kondani Konsekini Babani Konleche, Sonreo, the Lord keep you till we meet at the Lord's feet never to part again. And the Lord will uphold your wife and the children and the entire family. We miss you. We love you. My name is Funke Sonny. I'm Uncle Bayo's niece. Uncle Bayo was my amiable favorite uncle. His death was a big blow and so shocking. I just had to put myself together to say this. Words cannot describe how I feel about his demise. His death left everyone so shattered. He was an amiable soul, a loving man, kind, a cheerful giver, a gloomy personality, very friendly. He doesn't get annoyed easily. Very loving, very caring, very supportive. He left an indelible mark in my heart. And now I'm just left with his beautiful memories. But what can we do? We took soul is in God. He's the give and take of life. I will surely miss the presence of a truly and lovable uncle that he was. Good night, Uncle Bayo. We love you, but God loves you more. My name is Dola Poyebamiji. I'm Uncle Bayo's niece. Um, his death was a blow to everybody's face. Nobody expected it. It's actually a very, very painful exit. But I'm so happy I was able to speak with him last on my birthday. He called to wish me well, not knowing that would be the last time I'll be hearing from him. I pray may God make you rest in perfect peace. We love you, Uncle Bayo. My name is Ibukonluwa Oshifua the niece of our late uncle, Adebayo Oshifua. Your death came as a shock to us. As you sit in the arms of the Lord, your family and friends mourn your death, especially your senior sister. We still wake up every morning, hoping this is a dream, and it hurts knowing you are gone forever. We will cherish every single moment we spent with you. Till we meet to part no more. Good night, Uncle Bayo. My name is Honorable Pastor Ayodeji Oshifua, younger brother to Adebayo Luka Ode Oshifua. Badami, Shoti Ya Atonye. Shoti Ya Atonye. Why now? Why is it that when you were 30 years you left Nigeria? You left Nigeria on the 10th of September 1990 on your birth date when you were 29. Why is it that when we were all planning for our father's 28th years of demise, our father died on the 21st of September 2000? 
Why do you have to die now on your elder sister's birthday, 26th of September? Why do you have to die when your oil and gas business was approved by the federal government of Nigeria? Why do you have to die now when you know I can't live alone? Who will guide and me now and encourage me? Be you who would do that for me now? Omo ni shafe, omo kini kodani konsi kini baba ni kole shi oro baba fuwa. Omo aroju oguma gwa gwa aja yi wala aja yimbe ni kore biko, akpa dele ti odo. Akpa dele ti yo. Thank you very much for that. Um, we're going to hear another hymn now from Ao. Abide with me. Are you okay sitting down? We've been sat down a long time. Maybe, maybe we could stretch our legs and stand while this song's played, if you wish. Thank you. 
seated. We have our full reading now from Isaiah 25. Add your tone. Good evening, everyone. The fourth, the fourth bit um, Bible reading is from Isaiah 25, 6 to 9. And in this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all people a feast of choice. Sorry. A feast of choice. Do you want me to read it for you? I'll continue. Okay. A feast of choice spaces. A feast of wine on the leaves. Shall I do this? I'll, I'll, read, I'll read this for you. of wine on the leaves of things full of marrow on the world to find wine on the leaves and he will destroy on his mountain the surface of the covering cast over all people and the veil that is spread over all nations he will swallow up death forever and his Lord and the Lord God will wipe away tears from all faces the rebook of his people and it will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken, and it will be said in that day, Behold, this is our God. He have waited for him, and he will save us. This is the Lord. He has waited for him. He will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Bless you. Well Thank you. Well we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Amen. Amen. Olamide, number one son. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. My dad was very good to me. I learned so much from him about the values of life. I will always remember him as my father, my mentor, and my hero. Despite my shortcomings while going through a rough patch at some point in my life, my dad never condemned me. He always showed me unconditional love under any circumstance, even though when I felt undeserving of his sympathy and kindness, he gave me the love and support any son could wish for. He was always without fail there for me and my brothers. While growing up, my dad did everything as a father would do to ensure his family is comfortable and happy. Always spoiling us with gifts on birthdays and Christmas. He would always go extra miles by doing everything possible within his means to give us the best quality of life any child could dream of. My dad was a very good dad. I can never forget him picking us up from school when we were younger and we moved to a new lovely neighborhood. My dad was, my, my dad made it a priority to enroll us in good schools as well, where he ensured all of our individual needs are fully met. I remember with great fondness those times when I rushed down the stairs all oh, because of the breakfast aroma. <laughs> it's true, it was good. Okay, anyway. Uh, breakfast aroma while making it through the whole house. Guess what? My dad was in the kitchen making breakfast for the whole family. Honestly, there was nothing peculiar about my dad's book. There was something peculiar, sorry, about my dad's uh, breakfast. It was just different. Everyone liked it, enjoyed it, especially Dele, when he was still alive. 
<laughs> it was especially something special. No wonder the whole family looked forward to it with great, great expectations. My dad was a man with so much love and affection for all of us. He always had our backs. My dad was the anchor who held everyone together and steered the ship of our family. My dad was the protector and mentor, always advising and guiding us through every stage and every milestone. My dad was a good listener too, always patient, giving a listening ear. When approached, he offered us, he had offered us a valuable advice which I'll treasure till this day and forever. I love my dad very much. He'll never cease from my heart. I know he was a very much loved by his colleagues, extended family and friends too. He'll never be forgotten no matter what. Everything he taught me will stay with me forever. I hold him close to my heart and embrace him in my journey. Dad, I will forever cherish the loving memories and moments I was privileged to share with you. My goal was to keep your memory alive and make you proud all the way. Dad, you'll be missed. You'll never be forgotten. And I love you, Dad. This is from Alamadeo Sifwa, the eldest son. Thanks. Thanks. Is your mask in there? Oh, <laughs> sorry, sir. All right. Thank you. Fantastic, thank you. We're now going to hear another famous old hymn. Sharon's going to sing Amazing Grace.
Thank you, Sharon. We're going to have another reading now, um, this time from the book of Philippians, De Lapo. I hope I've said that right. You'll tell me off if I haven't. Philippians chapter 3. My name is De Lapo Sholo, and I'm reading from Philippians 3, verse 20 to 21. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the walking by which he is able to even subdue all things to himself. May God bless his holy word. Thank you, Delapo. Tayo, middle son. <clears throat> You're right. Yeah, good man. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> to see in the ripple effects of my father's passing really demonstrates how much he is loved and will be dearly missed. He left so many friends here in London and back home in Nigeria, as well as siblings, plus my mum and my brothers and I. One of my biggest admirations I would always have for my dad is the freedom he gave all of us. My brothers and I always had the liberty to pursue any individual passions at every stage of our lives. He supported us and guided us by giving thoughtful counsel towards the decisions we would make when we wanted to pursue our career goals. Um, for me, specifically, my endeavour as a professional footballer, I will never forget how much he encouraged and supported me without reservation. I witnessed his tireless, tireless efforts, including making several connections just to find the best opportunities for me in life. Thank you, Dad. Dad never tried to mould us into anything we were not naturally called to be. We were all brought up with a sound education and we all enjoyed our childhood. Being raised by an intelligent role model such as my dad made it easy to see how much he was respected and admired when friends, relatives and family members visited us. That alone to me was a mark of a great man. Thus, as I was growing up, I associated many traits in my father as a mark of success. I remember when I bought my first car, it was, <laughs> it was a surprise. I didn't tell anybody in my family apart from my younger brother, Tiwa. Once the car was delivered, I prompted my dad to take a look through the window. It's mine, dad. <laughs> I shouted. And in excitement, my dad res responded, Mmm, that's good, a Mercedes. And if you know my dad, you know he's got fine, he, he loves the fine things in life, my dad. Um, immediately, we both headed for the car, where I asked him to, to test drive it. That day, it was obvious that he was a proud father. The broad smile, the wild grin, and the laughs said it all. I promised, I promised him that that was just the beginning and that I still have a long way to go. Affectionate and vivid memory of my dad, of him being, is of him being in the life of, being the life of the party, sorry. What the heart of leisure in small gatherings among friends and family members, even till now, I can clearly recall his jovial persona, laughing and grinning 
His charisma simply lit up the entire room. His light shone, his energy ignited ev everyone around him. His liveliness was contagious and so clear to see. <laughs> My brothers and I, even without fully understanding Yoruba, still laughed along and laughed. We could feel the vibes of his jokes filling the air with happiness and joy. No human being on the planet is perfect. My dad would always affirm this saying. He and my mum would always encourage my brothers and I to study and observe the ways of Jesus Christ and the Bible. He always had a calm, relaxed head on his shoulders when it comes to handling situa situations or teaching us life lessons. I will always behold his instructions about mastering the book of Pro Proverbs. That if I follow the wisdom written in Proverbs, I will be a great man. And that it had nothing to do with money, fame or prestige. The simple teaching of truly lo loving your neighbours as you, as you would love yourself will unlock my blessings and pave my way to heaven. Dad, thank you for everything you have shown me as a father and as a husband to the strongest woman I've seen on this earth, my mum. Although your time with us was quicker than anyone would have wanted, there is nothing more you could have taught me to be a great man. The rest is up to Alamide, Tiwa and I to make you proud, while you and Dele watch over us with the rest of the angels in heaven. Thank you, da thank you Dad. We all love you dearly and you'll never be forgotten. Uh, my name is Adi Tayo Shofwa. Fantastic, thank you so much. Ayo's gonna play us another hymn, You Raise Me Up.
wonderful. Thank you. To your well. Come and bring your tribute to your dead. Good evening, everyone. When I think of my dad, it brings happiness to my heart, as I know it does to many others. Even in most unexpected moments, he could bring a smile upon my face. Dad had this technique of bringing life into the room with laughter for as long as he was there, leaving you, especially me, just craving more. I remember the times growing up, he would pop into the room as we were playing games, watching TV, begin telling us stories of his escapades in Nigeria, how he was the chief. <laughs> He's such an expert in making nicknames into songs like Super Dele. <laughs> in addition to the fun, Dad instilled in me the very principles I follow in life today. How important family is, how to cherish friendship and show respect to other people. To his very last days, Dad's life was instructive. As I reflect upon his life and the journey we shared as father and son, I realise he taught us how to grow old with dignity, humour and kindness. And when the good Lord finally calls, how to meet him with courage and with joy in the promise of what lies ahead. Now you belong to heaven. Good night, Dad. I'm Tiwa Lade Oshifwa, Bao's youngest son. Thank you. Thank you, so good. Ayo, are you ready? You're working hard tonight, sir. <laughs> My help is the title.
Fantastic. Are we allowed to clap? I think we should. Oh, thank you. Um, we've now got another Bible reading, this time from Matthew 11. Jemmy. Good evening. I'll be reading from Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 29. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and, and you will find rest for your soul. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. Obviously, they were, the, they were the words that we looked at right at the beginning of this evening. I would like to hear the tribute now from Bayo's wife. Good evening, everyone. I've promised myself that I will not cry because the late Adebayo Shifwa was someone full of life and he wouldn't want me to cry this evening, so I'm going to do my very best. I will always love you. Greetings, my beloved family, friends, and well wishes. I have come to celebrate the golden life of my soulmate not to question my faith, but the indelible mark left by the man with whom I spent the most precious 37 years, really going to 40, um, for, uh, of my life, has left me with no choice but to give a reckoning. I had known Adebayo casually as Bodabayo way back in 1978 through my uncle, who happened to be his classmate at Molusi College, where I also undertook the first two years of my secondary education. Guess what, but Abayo toasted me in 1983. A request which I swiftly and bluntly declined, as any shy and reserved omoge would do in my days. But his handsome and charming, intelligent young man persisted I wouldn't take no for an answer. After many months of restless chase, I eventually said yes to his proposal. Barely two years into our courtship, it was crystal clear to me that this is the man whom I would like to spend the rest of my life with. Bayer ticked all the boxes, including the ones I didn't know was in existence. He had a golden heart and a bright future, and gifted in many ways. Both my nuclear and extended family members loved and trusted and embraced him. That's it, Bio soon became an integral part of my biological family. By divine providence, my mom, God bless her soul, uh, blessed our union, and on the 5th of July, 1919, I said I do at Shumulu, marriage registry. The same month we relocated to the UK to build our dream home together. The Lord is good. Ours was a match made in heaven. God gave me more than I could think or imagine in a husband. Bao was my friend, my brother, life coach, counsellor, mentor, encourager and lots more. Starting a family was such, with such a man was a dream come true. We raised our four wonderful sons together, Olamide, Aditayo, Onaidele, God rest his soul, and Tiwalade. He placed me and the boys first in every decision he made. He catered for us adequately and nurtured our sons to be honest, hard work and hardworking, God-fearing, responsible individuals. He did all he could to give us quality lives. 
while set, setting our children on the right path to attain what God has ordained for them in life. Even when life hurts, we have always stuck together until God gave us victory. Bias' kindness was not limited to his immediate family alone. He had been channeled of blessings to his siblings, cousins, friends alike. He did very well by looking after his parents until they went to be with the Lord. As human as we are, none of us could be perfect, but as for me, Bolanle, I could not have wished for more. My bio clearly knew what he wanted in life, and God gave us the grace to attain most of them. Hard work with divine blessing was the key to our breakthrough. Having served meticulously for many years as a housing officer in Newham Council, where he rose through the ranks, Bayer later ran his own business as an estate agent. Up till the time of passing, he had everything going to emerge as a business magnet in oil and gas, but man proposes, God disposes. My husband had an insatiable appetite for knowledge. He was alive to he was alive today. I'm sure he will be thinking of adding more letters to his MA, LLB, LMM, etc., which his friends have talked about. I can't even mention the many certificates he has bagged here and there. No doubt he had a strong value of excellence. But now the sky was no longer to be his limit because he is now in heaven, way above the skies. Truth be told, it was very hard for me to behold my new reality that Bayou Gaga, the life and soul of the party, the bubbly jester, the charismatic socialite, the man of the people, the political commentator, and the rude light Jebu man. Mm -hmm. The master strategist is gone forever. Nevertheless, I'm resolute in Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy sorry, 31 uh, verse 6. As I trust that the Lord will see us through, so in all I give glory to God for the quality time Bio had shared with me. Playing, fighting, forgiving, Nourishing, caring, helping, loving, providing for one another. The Bible states in Matthew 22, verse 30, that there is no marriage made in heaven, but I am praying that God will make my flat next to my soulmate, where I can spend eternity in the company of the only lover I have ever had. Rest in peace, Adebayo, Ulukayodi, Ishola, Omo Ijebu Odoro, Omo Okinikon Odani Konsi, Kini Baba Nikon Oshe. I got that right, I think. <laughs> I love you, but God loves you more. Bye until we meet, part no more. Good night. Bye. Bolan Le Shifa, the wife. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. We're now going to see the Ulriki, the chanted eulogy, up on the screens. <laughs> Aja na kushubu kole ni de o enre lo ni le yi o o di gbere adiba yo shubu kole ni de o enre lo ni le yi o o di gbere ale gbe ale ri o di gbere iku toro oru Oh, Lord, I'll be
Lani mo fori male lodo mama to bi oloma Ogo ko to ni won omo kulodo to to de boriwa Omo ara kan mi titi do awo samba 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 ogo ogo omo ya mo mi lelegu oku ti won gboda ja ti ota ime ko oku tan gboda ja ti olowo lori baba won ka so fun na pe elegu omo ara kan mi titi do awo Wadi ba yo wadi ba yo oluka yo de so lo mo shifuwa ba mo na mi de baba ta yo baba ti wa omo de bugbo omo adun made adun mo su pe di yede aladi o kuku maga ti pe yan wa ye ke me ke me ke me ke me omo de ba lo kun aro oroku aro ready ye wa mo wu se ni oyo yo mi yo oyo yo won ni omo yo mo nti se ni o le pa ni je bu le mo ere de wa me pa ni su je ade ba yo so lo o ejiji je eja je eji itoku ha ge mo baba yi fi bo ni adun made adun mo su pe di eje ha fun won bi eni fun yan kan gbo je bu ti bo won ni won ni owo lowo won ni kekere eje wo o agba je wo wo gbo ma durun ma do o ni won ni owo lowo ana wo ma na da na baba won mi je o di gbo o o da ri na ko agba se ta gbe re le aru ko se tan re ko su and sing that great hymn, It Is Well, It Is Well With My Soul, Sharon.
Thank you. In just a moment, Ola will come with a vote of thanks and a closing prayer, but I would just like to pray for the family members. Just before I do that, I'm just going to read a few verses from one of the Psalms, Psalm 103. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed, he remembers that we are dust. As for man, his days are like grass, he flourishes like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it's gone and its place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him. Let's pray now for those who mourn. Father, please comfort us in our pain. Be gracious with those who mourn, that as they turn to you, they can find the strength and comfort of your love. Make your presence known to them. Strengthen them by your power and guide them by your spirit. And please grant them real faith and a sure hope in him who is the resurrection and the life. And Lord, please speak to us now in the presence of death and make us deeply aware of the shortness and uncertainty of life. Grant each member of this family the wisdom and the grace to use the time left to each of us on this earth correctly. And help us turn from our own wrongdoing and give us the strength to follow Jesus in the way that leads to eternal life. Amen. Amen. Ola. Now that we are coming to a close, the Oshifua family has asked me to express their profound gratitude to everybody since when our late beloved brother Adebayo has been ill through till the time of his passing. And for your love showered onto the family and your love for him even in death. They have asked me to express their appreciation for the moral support, for your prayers, and for your financial support. Especially committee of friends of the deceased. In friends in Nigeria, in friends in America, in friends in the United Kingdom here, your message was delivered. The money kept coming in. And literally, God has made you a channel of blessing to make this happen. You have given your friend a befitting burial. The family has also asked me to apologize that um, so many people who felt they weren't carried along this was not anticipated. Nobody planned for death. But you heard about it, and you really did more than what anybody could have thought or imagined. They asked me to pray that the Lord will continue to enrich your pulses, that your love and bond with your existing friends here on earth will continue to grow stronger and stronger. That when you ask for help in one way, the Lord will respond in hundreds of ways to you. We are very grateful. May the Lord bless and keep you. May he be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you friends and give you peace. Thank you very much. God be with us till we meet again. Amen. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. It's been an honour. Seriously, I've never, I've never met many of you. Most of you I've never met, but I've, I've 
being privileged to share this moment with you. Thank you. Um, I'm not going to kick you, kick you out, but I would also like to encourage us not to linger too long. <laughs> so thank you so much once again. God bless you all. Sorry? Hola. I did not hold my notes. I, I was going to express a appreciation also to um, members of the City Hope Church, the leadership, right from uh, Pastor Paul Brown, Paul Medhurst, um, Anna, Doyin, Sharon, and everybody that has pulled this together on a short notice. The family is very, very grateful. And also I was going to thank, uh, yes, members of the House Fellowship of Sister Gbemi also, the uh, prayer band, the New Covenant Church members who have been praying along while our brother was on sickbed, and all those who have been interceding also and have been calling, you know, to encourage the family. I left my note, so I've just remembered that now. Thank you very much. God bless you. There's a lesson there. Never lose your notes, man. <laughs> bless you all. Thank you so much. <laughs>